All right. Hi, everyone. Thanks so much for joining us today. Like Nate said, we're going to do this on the Halloween wreath. And actually, I'm going to start out by showing you just how to do a floral wreath for like this time of year and then how easy it is to add the witch um, as it gets closer to Halloween. So let's go ahead and get started. Um, we also have uh, Miss Tony on chat today. She will be fielding all the questions. If you need me to slow down or you wanna see something again, just let us know and we'll do what we can. So start out by showing you all the materials I found at Michael's. Uh, this is our 12 inch fluorofoam wreath. It's extruded ring. Um, it also comes in white, but today we are using green just because it blends really nicely with the uh, florals. I also found this um, ball leaf bush. Looks like it has five stems on it. And I used two of these. And I found this gold, I guess it's maybe daisies with some little filler berries in it and leaves. Looks like there's three, seven, about seven stems on that. So anything similar um, to that would, would be fine. And I used two of those. So any mixed floral bush. And then I did see these, like um, if you wanted to substitute, I did find these uh, pumpkin, this pumpkin stem and then some other colors of flowers. Found these in yellow. So really anything goes for this wreath. I just, I just went by color. Just all these yummy fall colors. All right, so that's that. And then I found for the witch, Michaels has these cool hat picks. It's already on a pick for you. And also her little legs and boots, they're already on pick, so you don't have to worry about how you're gonna insert them into the wreath. And a little witch's broom. And then for her cape, I just used a glitter tool. So I just cut links of that to create her cape. And then in the project that you see online, I used, um, the sprayed burlap and this, what is this? One and a half inch orange um, ribbon together. But her legs that I bought on this wreath were orange and black. And the new legs that I found were purple and black. So I did change up the ribbon. Uh, to show you a different pattern you can use. So I found this fun um, linen stripe and then a, a purple satin that I'm gonna use in this wreath. All right, and then some tools. You're gonna need scissors to cut your tool and ribbon. You're gonna need diagonal cutters or wire cutters to cut the floral stems and the shorten the stems on the legs. You're gonna need some greening pins. These are Ashland greening pins back in the uh, floral tools. And greening pins are, they're also called, you'll hear them called uh, U pins or S pins, but they're just a little U shaped pin and it's just nice for securing things into our foam. And you will need a low temp glue gun. This is a CraftSmart glue gun um, that I found at Michael's. And the reason you want low temp is a lot of times the high temp guns get so hot that they will melt the foam. So just be sure you grab a low temp gun. And some of those guns um, are actually high temp or low temp. They have a switch. And you'll need a half, um, half 
for a foam ball. Now this can be white or green. I used green because it kind of hides in the wreath under her hat, but you could absolutely use white and cover it with something or, you know, even maybe do yarn hair for her or something. I don't know, but green or white. All right, and the first thing I did is start with my leaves. How are we doing so far? And if you guys, I love to hear where you're all watching from. So if you guys can put in the chat where you're watching from, that would be fun to know. And let us know if you're crafting along or, or just watching today. We're, um, we're broadcasting from our headquarters in Ludington, Michigan. So our fall colors have actually already started. We've got a couple of people from Virginia, Kansas, Ann Arbor, Long Beach, California, another Southern California, Texas. Don't know how to pronounce this. It's Maryland. <laughs> <laughs> Bloomingburg, New York, El Paso, Texas. So on these stems, you're going to see they're kind of um, far and few between. So what I did to make it a little more compact for the wreath is you're going to want to cut off this top portion. About inch and a half is all you need. And then I used this next part together. So this little dried piece and this other leaf together. And again, just about an inch is all you need to insert. And you can get rid of that little extra off the top if you don't want it on there. So that's all I did to get ready. Just cut off that little top portion. And then that little second portion. And that's the little pieces that we're going to insert into the reed. So, so you'll get quite a bit of coverage by cutting this apart like this. I like to get all my pieces ready because an easy way to make sure that you're gonna be um, oh, evenly spaced and have enough product to go around. I like to lay my stuff out and kind of lay it out with just, just around the wreath so you can kind of get it evenly spaced before you start inserting everything. So it looks like every stem I'm getting two pieces out of. Actually, this one, I think I'm getting three on this longer one. I'm using that middle piece and then this bottom piece by itself. Is everyone excited for fall and Halloween time? Do we have a lot of decorators out there? if they're going to be doing Christmas wreaths. We, I'm sure we will be doing Christmas wreaths. Um, what is my next one? Two classes? Two classes from now we're going to start. It's a, it's a um, kind of a Thanksgiving into Christmas, I guess you would say wreath. So see what I mean? You just kind of lay it around so that you get kind of a little bunches around and make sure that they're kind of evenly spaced. And then, um, and then I just kind of start building. So get these in and to put them in, just literally going to push them right into the foam, just like that. Now you can put a little glue in there. 
that'll hold it a little tighter for you. It's going to be on a door and it's going to get bumped around. You might want to add a little glue to the base of the stem before you insert it and that'll make sure it doesn't come out of there. And then right at the very top, I just leave a little spot for my bow because it, if you, I like my bow to set in my wreath. And if you put all your flowers all over and then add your bow, it just feels to me like your bow is sticking way out, way out from the wreath. So I always leave a place, a little home for my wreath to, to live. Now I kind of have them evenly spaced around the outside. Just come in there. And then all I do is kind of come in between them all and do it in the front, like in the face of the wreath. So that was around the outside edge. And you can see it's, it's definitely needs to get filled in, but now I just go around the face and kind of evenly space around the face. And then there's three or four left. And then I just put those right, pointing right in towards the center. And that gets you a few leaves in the center. All right. It doesn't look like much yet, I know. <laughs> so then these guys actually, um, if you have the same stem that I have, they push up. So all the little leaves and berries and all of that will push right up to the top of the stem. So you'll, oh, and sometimes they just pop right off. Oh, what I do? On. So there's a little cap on the end that's supposed to keep it from popping off, but I guess I didn't. So yeah, so then you can see I just pushed all of it right up to the end of the stem. You just slide it up. All right, and then you're going to cut your inch and a half inch stem, whatever it is, and go ahead and pop those off after you've pushed them up. And pushing all this up to the top really helps fill in because it makes a quite a nice little bunch for you to fill in with. Right. And then save these little, I always, I mean, not always, but a lot of times if you need a stem for a flower or if you need a, a skewer or something, even these are even nice for holding little parts, the foam parts while you're painting them. Um, so I always keep a couple of these around just to come in handy. All right, so now same thing. You have some of these, like three of these on the bush. Oh, it looks like four are these um, goldy daisies. So I just make sure that four spots evenly spaced, I put the flowers. So maybe one there. And you have the other, the other uh, bush yet, but maybe here and maybe here. Now we have our four batches of flowers. And then the other little uh, berries same thing, I just kind of went in between where I just put the flowers. Get those evenly spaced around. Okay. 
Common, it's filling in. And again, you're pulling all these up to the tip, cutting about a one inch stem. And you might need to glue these in if you're just gonna be on a door and get bumped around. You might wanna make sure you glue it in. And I would just put a little bit of glue on the end of the stem at, before you insert it. And that usually does the trick. All right. This one's going to be a little poofier than the other one, but that's okay. We like poofy. So all I'm doing is just making sure that the berries are evenly spaced. The flowers are evenly spaced. Oh. All right, and then we're going to fill in even more with the ribbon. And I like to use the ribbon as a filler because it kind of ties the bow into the whole. First, I'm going to do my bow. Ties the colors of the ribbon in throughout the wreath. So to do my bow, I'm going to make about a, I don't know, we'll say about a six inch tail. So you leave that right there. Then you're going to bring the ribbon to the back. And you're going to make a loop and whoop, you know what, actually, I did the bow double. So to get the color right in there right off the bat, go ahead and lay your ribbons together instead of making two separate bows. So you'll lay them right one on top of the other, about a six inch tail. Bring your ribbons to the back. Figure out how long you want your loop and make a pinch. That's gonna bring you your first loop. And then I like to kick the tail kind of out of the way. And then we go from the back, bring it forward. And make sure your tails are about the same width, length. And then we will Make a really like a twist at the center and then bring your center of your bow and you're going to make a super tight little loop for the center of your bow. One thing I didn't grab is a tie wire. So this is a cloth covered stem wire. You can use the, these are over in the floral department by the Greenington's, but um, you can use any wire. You could use a bread twist tie. Um, any, any wire will work. So you're just gonna thread it right in through the center of the bow, bring it around to the back. And then twist really tight in the back. Hold all that together. And then you can cut off these little tails. And 
And then I like to, if you fold your ribbons in half, lengthwise, and if you come in from the bottom corner and into the center, you'll get that perfect little dovetail. So fold it lengthwise, and then from the corner to the center, and there you have it. So your bow, you can actually use one of your greening pins and a little bit of glue and just catch some of the fabric from your bow, like up here at the top and wiggle that pin through. Sometimes it takes a minute because it's going through several layers. And then you can use that to secure to your wreath. So there's your bow. And now we're just gonna go back in with all this ribbon that we have left. You're gonna cut like, I'm gonna say four inch, six, yeah, six inch strips about six inches, six or seven inches. So all you'll do, and then if you want the tails to be dovetailed, you can fold it in half and you can do dovetails or you can just do them like at an angle. Um, I kind of like them as a little cleaner. And then you're gonna need your greening pins out. You're gonna use the greening pins through the center. You don't really have to poke it through the ribbon, just straddle it like that on the pin and then just start plugging them in. That's gonna be your filler. I'll show you what this one looks like. You're gonna want it about six inches, eight inches, depending on how tall you or how far out from your wreath you want it to sit. And then we're going to thread it through the center and stick it in. And we just continue making our little ribbon pieces. So Donnie, these, these hold so securely, they don't really need glue, but if someone has this on their outside door, would you recommend that you still do the glue? Yes, um, even these pins, yeah. They can, they can get jiggled loose. Um, it's probably better to just, I mean, unless you plan on change, maybe you wanna change out the ribbon or something, then maybe not, but it's gonna be this wreath forever, then I would definitely make sure everything is glued in. Just because of wind and movement. We'll keep going. And you just want to put this color all around the wreath. It's kind of fun too because the ribbons kind of move in the wind and they have a little movement in your wreath. And this ribbon's kind of shiny, so you have a little bit of shimmer. This is just a satin ribbon. How's everyone doing? Where will we find those pins down there? Are they all called the same thing or are there various sizes? Yep, names? at Michael's, they're called greening pins and they're right back. Um, they're back kind of where all the, actually where the tools are. So like where the, um, 
wire cutters and there's all their there I think they're like their rolls of burlap and base fillers and all that stuff. I believe it's all over in that section. Over by their um, their reeds too. They have all their reeds hanging up over there. It's looking pretty messy from here. <laughs> viewpoint. Anybody making a, did they say they're crafting along or not? Comments about them yet. Oh, oh and just I just um, well you'll know when you get to the end because you're gonna run out of ribbon. But there is enough on a roll. Just enough on a roll to get you enough on here. All right, where else do I? This is my last purple. All right, let's get some of this in here. Oh, again, let's say inches seems to be six to eight inches seems to be a good length. Just rattle that ribbon with the pin. And we'll start plugging in some of this color. So yeah, so this wreath, just as it is with the florals and the fun pops of purple or orange, whichever ribbon that you decide to use. Um, is pretty just all by itself. And then as you get closer to Halloween, of course have the witch that's on here. And then after I show you how to put the witch on, I am going to show you a couple other options um, that you could do using that same green half ball that you use for the witch. I'm gonna turn it into a spider and show you how to quick make a spider instead of a witch. And then um, how to use that same ball to make a little ghost if you'd rather have a ghost. Okay, that one in. No comments. Maybe they're all busy crafting. <laughs> Come out to the side. So you see that color from the side. You got to remember you're going to see the wreath from all angles. So got to make sure you pretty it up from all sides. Include some on the edges. I should have had some of these cut up before I started instead of having to put you guys through all this cutting. Uh, 
Wow, this thing's screaming something, isn't it? Kind of wild and woolly. Oops. All right. We don't have our Luddington girl watching. We haven't had her on. She did most of the town last year when I very first started doing videos. And she was so excited that my girls was doing videos. All right. Well, I think you guys kind of get the idea, right? Add your purples, add your whatever ribbon you're using. And you're just going to use that to fill in until you get all your green covered. I'm going to stop there so we have time for everything else. So the witch, so to do the witch, so here's your, your done wreath and it's on the door and it's beautiful and Halloween's coming and it's time to switch it up. So what I would do is take your bow right off and you can actually use your bow somewhere else in the house on one of your other decorations or on your mailbox or something or save it for next year. So this is basically your witch's head. So you're just going to glue that. And, and again, if you're going to change this wreath back to a fall wreath next year and you don't want the witch permanently on there, then what was up with my glue gun? Then I wouldn't glue this ball on. I would just pick it on with a craft stick or like I said, a piece of this, you know, the old, the um, used stems from your floral bush, just cut a piece of that off and use that to secure your ball in place. So this will go right into that ball, what kind of, actually this almost skewers the ball onto the wreath itself. Oh. My hat is coming off its stem, hang on. I'll come loose out of there. All right, so you're gonna want this, I would say cut off probably half of that stem because you're not gonna need nearly, nearly that much. So about half. And then go, uh, go ahead and put your hat right down on, right straight on to the, to the ball. So that is her head. And now that her hat is in place, you can start with your tool. And now the tool, all I did was cut, these are 12, let's see. These are like 12 to 14, I'd say 14 inch links. So you wanna, you wanna put four pieces together. So four 14 inch pieces. And you just lay them one right on top of the other. So they're nice and thick. Cause this stuff is just so see-through. So when we, we double them up like this, it makes it kind of darker and, and better for her cape. So four pieces and then about inch and a half, two inches from the top, just make a little like pleat it together. So you're just gonna bring it all together right there. So it's kind of like that. You have a little top piece. And then you're going to take your greening pin again and just straddle it over that where you have it puckered. 
And then this part is going to be her little collar. And then this is going to be her cape. So take your pin. And again, if you if you want to put a little bit of glue on the pin before you insert it, it will help it stay more securely. Um, and then right under her hat, just go ahead and pin that right in the middle. So that's the first part of the first part of the cape. And this is you can kind of pull this apart and, and fluff it a little bit because it's supposed to be like a, maybe like her little ruffled collar. And you're gonna take four more pieces. So you need, you need 12 pieces. Yes, you need 12, 14 inch pieces. One, two, three, four. And then you're gonna lay four pieces together about an inch, two inches down from the top, just start to pucker. That all together, hold it, and straddle it with your greening pin. So you have it like that. And then pull this down for her collar. And then you're gonna insert this one right next to the one, sorry. <laughs> right next to the one that you just put in. So that, that side of her little cape. And then the last one, you should have four pieces. We'll lay them all together. So they're nice and thick. About two inches down, you're gonna do all this pucker. And then your pin. And fold that down for her collar. And put this on the opposite side next to that first one. And then again, if you un, um, pull apart the layers on the little top collar part, and it makes a really pretty little like a ruffle collar around the around the top of her cape. I don't know if you guys can see that. Kind of. See how it makes a cute little. All right, and that is her cape. Just like that. Super easy. And then her legs are a little, the stem is a little too long on them too, because you only need about an inch to go into your, to your wreath, inch, inch and a half. So we're gonna cut these stems off. And then her legs will of course just go I kind of have them pointing kind of up a little and kind of at a little angle. Something like that. And just make sure they're evenly spaced. Kind of like that. And then her little broom has a them already on it. And I'm gonna leave this one long so that her so that her broom is comes out longer than her legs. So this one you just put right in the middle. Gotta find foam first. And that's that. My my camera looks is is my camera really bleached out to you guys? A little washed out, yeah. I wonder what's going on. Hmm. Sorry luckily about that. The, uh, I'm not sure. Luckily, the project is very colorful, so it still sticks out enough. But <laughs> yeah, I'm not sure why that why that's yeah. doing that. What was the black? fabric called the cape 
Mm -hmm. It is glitter tulle. So it comes on a roll, it's six inches wide and it comes on a roll. It's very thin by itself, very see-through, but that's why we layer up four pieces together so that it shows up a little nicer. All right. All right, so how about we see the other options of some other things that we could put in the middle of this wreath? Do we have enough time? Yes. All right, so you have your you have your half ball that you have for, bought for this project. So what I did is I just painted it black. And then this is called, what is this called? This is called giant chenille pipe cleaner. So it's like pipe cleaner, but great big. And then it's, it's wired. So perfect for, for spider legs. So I cut six of them at about seven inches and two of them at about five inches. So you just start. And what kind of paint did you use on that pal? I'm sorry, I just used a, a, just a black, any black acrylic, brush on acrylic paint will work great with foam. Then the legs, of course, just insert right into the foam. There's a nice stiff wire in there and they just push right in really nice. A little bit of glue would be helpful. So we're gonna do My little end is bent over. I'm gonna do three of the longer ones and then you can just give them a little bend to give them a little life, like a creepy old spider. I see on this side. Your giant pipe cleaners. Over in the crafts, over kind of by the kids' crafts. Um, maybe by the, geez, I can't remember. Maybe by the like the boas and that kind of. So there's the six. And then I do the little front two. I just did a little bit shorter. To make like like his little front legs. I'm not a spider expert, so I don't really know if that's what they really look like, but it seems to me when you're seeing a creepy old spider, they kind of have two little shorter ones out front that they try to get you with. So then um, you could either use these are just uh, animal eyes they have over in the crafts, um, probably in the dolls, the doll making section, but they have a nice little shaft on the end of them that will insert right into the foam. So you could put this on here and he can be done. Or you could actually paint another little half ball. This is a one and a half inch half ball and you could actually add that to the um, to the front of him and give him a head if you wanted to make him look a little more realistic. And of course, you could also put um, you could also put wiggle eyes on him, to make him a little little more comical, a little more fun. And I'm going to pop these little black ones in here for now, just like that. So, do you want to tell them how to use that? Sure. Um, so you can use spray paint. the The problem is the propellants in the can that that make the paint come out is the stuff that melts the foam. So if you take your, your can and you keep it held away um, 12 to 14 inches from the surface of the foam uh, and spray at that distance. And then two, um, try, not to, try not to make it a, a, a super dark color all at once. You'll wanna spray on a light coat and then let that coat dry 
and then spray on another coat and let that coat dry until you get the, co the coverage that you want. If you try to just hold real close and spray a solid coat right at right off the bat, um, it's just going to melt the foam and it's it's not pretty. <laughs> After that, it's just not pretty. So here's a cute little spider you can do with that same um, that same ball, that same four inch ball, and he would of course just be wherever on your wreath. You could add some spider webs or however but fun little idea for that ball. And then two, if you could make a little ghost out of that same ball. Now the ball is kind of big. Um, the diameter of the ball is kind of big for four, at four inches, but a super easy way to make your ball a little bit smaller for what you need is just, it takes a little force. You gotta push pretty hard. Just take that ball and roll it, roll that sharp cut edge on your table and just keep rolling and compressing that foam. And then I'll show you how much smaller. So there's your four inch ball and you just turned it into a three inch ball just by just by rounding those corners on the table. It's just that simple. So for the little cute ghost, it's really totally cheating because you don't even have to make a full ghost because he's gonna be sitting in your wreath and uh, they're only gonna see the, the front side of him. So all I did was cut a, I'm gonna say this is probably 14, maybe 12 by 14. And all I did, at, so the top is just straight across, straight down, and then I just curved the bottom edge for the bottom of the ghost. So 12 by uh, 14 by 14 ish um, piece of white fabric. This happens to be uh, fleece. I just thought it was kind of fun being a fuzzy little cute ghost, but any white fabric will work. So all I did was put the ball in the center of the fabric. And you're just gonna glue that top edge to the back of the ball like that. So you have the front wrap around the back and then just make a pleat. So you're gonna bring this part around and back. So you make a little pleat in the back and glue that in place. On this side, you're gonna smooth that and make a little pleat on that side and bring that side back. So that's what it's gonna look like on the back. It's just kind of like wrapping a present. No, no rhyme or reason. You're just gonna wanna get, you just wanna get the fabric tight towards the top of the ball is all. And the rest of it just hangs loose. That's it. Done deal. And then um, little black felt. Let's stick that on there for little eyes. And then we could probably get some pictures. Okay, I guess that's not going to come off there. We could probably get some pictures of these, the spider on the wreath and the ghost on the wreath and send it into Michael's and they will put it on the class so that you guys can see these when they're done. But how cute is that little ghost? And he would just, he would just ride right in the middle and actually, oh, oh I'm upside down. <laughs> and actually you could use your, um, your stem from your legs or um, one of these stems to put up inside your ghost, stick his head up on, on the top of the stem and then insert it into the wreath so that he will kind of be in the middle and, and floating. So then that's a couple other cute little critter ideas that you could use in the center. 
And then if you, um, one more idea. So this is our um, 12 by 18 by one inch white craft foam sheet. And it cuts very nicely with our clean cut foam cutter. Um, so this is an electric hot knife. It gets extremely hot and yes, it will burn you. So you do have to be careful. But all I did was cut out um, paper templates. And this turns on by twisting the collar. So this black collar twists back and forth. So the little line is on. Takes about, not, not that long to, I'm gonna cut out an O just cause it's quicker. Um, doesn't take that long to heat up. About 10, 15 seconds and it's heated up for you. So I just take this, this is poster board. And the reason I like to use poster board or cardstock is because you have a nice, um, a nice edge to follow along with your cutter because it's kind of hard to get it to to go straight without something to run it along. So once you get it going, let's put it up on. So well ventilated area. Got to make sure. It's a well ventilated area, have a fan going, have a window open, but it's as easy as inserting that in. And I know you're gonna get, you're gonna wanna go fast and you're gonna wanna push, but the only thing that's gonna do is get a cramp in your hand. You really wanna go slow and let the knife do all the work. And it's just kind of slow moving. Um, but if you let it do the work and go slow, you're gonna get a nice clean cut. Um, so once you get all these cut out, I just, I found this uh, font online and just printed it off on my computer and then cut it out of poster board. Um, you guys get the idea. I'm not gonna cut the whole thing out. But anyway, it cuts it out super accurately. And then all I did was paint them with white paint and put a little glitter on them. And that is another cute uh, add in for Halloween for your for your wreath. Can you remind them what that tool is called, Donnie? This is our clean cut foam cutter. All right. And then if we have a couple seconds, I can show you, or first, does anybody have any questions? No questions? So I can go ahead and show you guys. Tony can remind me the dates because I don't have them by me. We go to front view, Nate. Hi. So this is the 14th. I'm gonna show you how to cut out with our tool that I just showed you how to cut out this fun little house and decorate it for a centerpiece for Halloween. And then if you guys need a idea for Halloween costume, so this is my rainbow saurus. So I just took a t-shirt and some fun foam and made a cute little Halloween costume with a little. <laughs> so I'm gonna show you how to carve our foam and make your own little um, snout on the, on the front of, this is just a paper mache mask. So fun ideas. All right, everyone, I will hold these up for you guys to see. Oh, 
because her little leg falls off. Okay, so you remember when I said that you might need to, you might need to glue them in? Well, now you see, sometimes they can wiggle out. There's that one with the purples, and there's that one with the oranges. All right, everyone. There's no further questions. I'll I'll say goodbye then. Until next time. Thanks for making it fun with Floorcraft.